are here today in the sunshine tent, and the sun we're talking about is Jesus Christ. He is the Son of God. And let him shine not only in this tent, but let him shine in your heart. Let's begin with prayer. Lord Jesus, I thank you so much for this day. I thank you for the strength you're giving us. I ask that you bless this message, bless them every ear that goes by, and that your word enter into the heart. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Right, since we're at the tomato fest, we're going to look at a little lesson on Christian believers are like tomatoes. Did you ever think of that? I did. Did you ever think, why Christian believers are like tomatoes? Well, I never did. But while I was looking at the old farmer's almanac, and that, that's what farmers have used for years and years and years. And what it says about the old, about tomatoes in the old farmer's almanac, it's very similar to what the Bible says about believers. That's what we're going to look at. What the old farmer's almanac says about tomatoes and what the Bible says about believers, Christian believers. Now the first thing they tell us in the old farmer's almanac is that tomatoes need a lot of light. That's why Texas is a good place to grow tomatoes because they need a lot of light. They also need a lot of water. Hey. So we see here they put a soaker hose on this plant because the soaker hose has a lot of holes in it and all the water just keeps coming out all day long and this plant is getting all the water that they need and all the water that they want. Let's see what the Bible says about light and water for believers. Okay, Harold, tell us, what does the old farmer's almanac tell us? To ensure the plants grow stocky, not spindly, keep the young plants only a couple of inches from fluorescent grow lights. Alright, so we want healthy plants, not tall plants necessarily, but strong, healthy plants. These baby plants are only a few inches from the grow lights. Now what does the Bible tell us about believers? Then Jesus spoke out again, I am the light of the world. The one who follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of light. So Jesus tells us he's a grow light. <laughs> we have to stay close to him. And just like these plants are only inches from the fluorescent lights, we need to be as close to Jesus as we can be if we want to grow spiritually, if we want our soul to grow and mature. Jesus says, follow me and follow me close. I am the light for your soul. Amen. Now about water, what does the Farmer's Almanac say about water? Water well, about two inches per week. Feel the soil. If the top inch is dry, it's time to water. Okay, I bought this little plant. I've never owned a tomato plant before, but let's see. No, it feels kind of moist. That's because I poured a lot of water in there. Because I read the Farmer's Almanac and it said your tomato plant needs a lot of water. But what does the Bible say about believers? But no one who drinks the water I give will ever be thirsty again. The water I give is like a flowing fountain that gives eternal life. So Jesus says he gives water to the soul. Just like water for the body is good, just like water for the plant is good, Jesus is water for the soul. And our souls will be dry and dusty. And our lives will feel dry and dusty. And if you're feeling that, if you're feeling that drought, 
out in your soul, it's time to go to Jesus and let him be the water that waters the very soul and makes you feel alive, makes you feel refreshed and gives life to your soul. I was reading the Farmer's Almanac and it said a handy rock will help my tomato plant. Well, I didn't know that. <laughs> but this is what it says. To help tomatoes through a drought, place flat rocks next to the plant. The rocks pull water up from under the ground and keep it from evaporating. Okay, so in dry times, we put some rocks near the plant. What good does that do? It keeps the water from evaporating, but it does even more than that. It makes the water that's very, very deep in the soil, it draws it up to the top. The rock draws the water up, and where the rest of the land is kind of dry, where the rocks are, it pulls dirt. You turn the rock over and it's moist. Yeah. Where a rock is, because it pulls the rock from deep. And Jesus says, let's read here what the Bible says about Jesus. They all drank the same spiritual water. They drank from the spiritual rock that went with them. That rock was Christ. Okay, so Jesus is a rock. And if we bring Jesus close to us, He can water our souls even in drought time. Yes, amen. The Bible says that, that, um, that Jesus is the rock that waters our soul. And just like the rock for my plant is pulled from the deeper places, you may go through a time when it seems like there's no help anywhere. <laughs> Good to see you But Jesus can find water to refresh your soul even in the worst of times. Amen. Why? He goes deep. He draws the water from deep within. The Bible, I mean the almanac says water fresh and it talks about loamy soil and it talks about end rot. We're going to look at loamy soil and end rot. rot. First loamy soil. Soil type, loamy, drinks water, well drained soil. Okay, that's the kind of soil we have in East Texas. It means that there is a high measure of sand in the soil. And that sandy soil drinks the water. And the water goes through and there's always fresh water. It doesn't stagnate. It doesn't stay there. It goes through the soil and then new water comes in and goes through the soil. Now what does the Bible say about Christian believers? A good person who gives in to evil is like a muddy spring or a dirty well. Okay, so you may be thinking, oh, I'm a good person. But without fresh water, without Jesus, without the Holy Spirit and His Word, without fresh water coming in your soul, It's not enough. Uh, the Bible says that uh, those who give into evil are like muddy waters. Wow. And, and you can turn into a muddy cesspool. Yeah. <laughs> If you don't go to Jesus fresh every day, freshly in prayer, freshly in His Word, freshly receiving from Him. And another problem with our tomato plants is irregular watering. Irregular watering. Missing a week and trying to make up for it leads to blossom and rot and cracking. Blossom and rot. We got a picture of that here. There we go. Blossom and rot. What causes that is missing watering your tomatoes for a week 
and then trying to make up for it by overwatering. It doesn't work, and it causes sickness and disease in your plant. And sometimes we do this with Jesus. We don't pay any attention to Jesus. We don't read his word. We're not in prayer. We have nothing to do with Jesus for a week or a month, maybe a year. And then we think, oh, you know, I need to get back to the Lord and get back to the ways of the Lord. And then we stop again. And then we start again. And this can make us all sick. Oh God, you are my God, and I long for you. My whole being desires you. Like a dry, worn out, and waterless land, my soul is thirsty for you. And this is how we need to be. The psalmist said, I am thirsty, thirsty for God. My soul is like a thirsty, dried out land, and I need the water. I need Jesus to water my soul. Amen. And we need to have that, not just off and on. Sometimes I want Jesus, sometimes I don't want Jesus. Let's be like the psalmist and be thirsty for Jesus. Be desiring of Jesus all the time, like a thirsty land. We also find out in raising tomatoes that they need movement and they need mulch. And let's look at the movement first. If, grow, if growing them indoors, provide a breeze for your tomatoes. Right, if you're growing your tomatoes indoors, it's not enough to give them light, it's not enough to give them fertilizer, it's not enough to give them water. They actually need a breeze. They need a refreshing breeze because the plants need to move. Just as they would outside in the wind, they need a breeze. The wind blows where it pleases, and you hear its sound, but you don't know where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit of God. Okay, so spiritually, the Bible says the Holy Spirit is a breeze. The Holy Spirit is a wind. He is a breeze for your soul. Amen. And we need that breeze. We need the Spirit of God to move us. Yes. How long has it been since the things of God have moved you? Yes. How long has it been since the story of the cross has moved your soul? The Holy Spirit will blow upon us and move us and make us to feel moved by the story of Christ and by the, the, the gospel of our salvation. Amen. Cover the ground with two to four inches of mulch to minimize weeds and help keep the soil evenly moist. All right, we were looking at the mulch, back to the mulch picture. And this is mulch all at the bottom of the plant. And you pack the bottom of the plant with mulch, and it's, it's, it, it keeps in the water, and it keeps it moist. Read this verse. When you pray, go into a room alone and close the door. Pray to your father in private. He knows what is done in private, and he will reward you. Right, so this is about prayer. Just like that plant is covered with mulch, uh, we need to be covered with prayer. We need to go down into a, into a private room and just pray. Just close all the windows, I mean, close the curtains, close the door, turn the TV off and say, Lord, I'm staying here in this place until I feel you. Amen. We also learned that there are some really dangerous times for tomato plants, and the most dangerous time is called a hard frost. Take one. First hard 
hard frost threatens pull the plant and hang it upside down in the basement. All right. <laughs> We're all subject to hard frost. <laughs> Sometimes, I mean, we, we, our faith is good, we go along as believers, something might happen, makes us a mad at God, makes us hard, makes us turn our back, makes us cold to God. That's a hard frost. And a hard frost can kill your plant. And so what does the Bible, I mean, what does the um, almanac say to do with the plant if it's sub if, if you see a hard frost coming, it says to pull it out of the ground, take it in the basement to turn it upside down. Let's see what a believer needs to do. If my own people will humbly pray and turn back to me and stop sinning, then I will answer them from heaven. I will forgive them. So sometimes we might suffer a hard frost. And we're, we've gotten away from God a little bit. We turned our back on God a little bit. That's a hard frost. What to do? Bring that down to the basement. Uh -huh. And get down on your face before God. And humble yourself. And say, Lord, I've been sinning. And I need to come back to you. Yes. And he says he will hear. And he will forgive. Amen. My tomatoes need support. And there's two ways that tomatoes are supported. Staking and caging. This one is caged. We're going to look at the difference between staking and caging your tomatoes. First, staking. Staking keeps developing tomato fruit off the ground, while caging lets the plant hold itself upright. Alright, so staking is more support. It's tied right to the stake, whereas the cage is not tied to the cage, but the cage is there so that it can develop some inner strength of its own. What does the Bible say about support? So encourage each other and help each other grow stronger in faith, just as you are already doing it. Alright, so you're stronger in faith? Encourage someone else who needs encouragement in the Lord. Now some people need a lot of support. Maybe they're just new babies in Christ. Maybe they've come from a hard place. Maybe they're uh, come from sexual addiction or alcoholism or they just uh, had a hard time in life. And they need maybe more attention, maybe stinks, maybe call them up every couple, every, every couple times a day. How are you doing? Can I pray for you? Amen. A little bit older in the Lord, maybe they just need a little support just to know that people are there for them, Amen. that they're surrounded by love, but encourage each other in the Lord and give each other support. <laughs> now this is an interesting thing. It talks, the almanac talked about how deeply you have to plant tomatoes. It said, now don't do this with every vegetable, but with tomatoes, go deep. Plant very, very deep in the ground. And we will see how deep. What does the almanac say? Plant your tomato plants deeper than they come in the pot, all the way up to the top of the few leaves. Plant your tomato plant all the way up to the top of the few leaves. That means if I were to put this in the ground, I had to cut up all these branches and plant it up to here. And then the roots grow out of the stems. So what does the Bible tell us? about a believer's walk going deep. So flee youthful desires 
and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. All right. All those who call on the Lord, your, your walk is not done. You get to go deeper and deeper and deeper. Yes. It says to pursue righteousness. You may be righteous when you first come to Christ, but you can go deeper. It says to pursue faith, love, and peace. You may be doing that now, but go deeper and deeper and deeper. Amen. Also with tomato plants, you have to give them room to grow. They start off very small very tiny but as you see here they're planting them about two feet apart and giving each one of these tiny little plants lots of room to grow what does the farmer's almanac say give each plant enough room to grow crowded conditions inhibit their growth and lead to disease all right so crowded conditions inhibit their growth and lead to disease. So each plant has to have plenty of room to stretch its branches and be fruitful and grow. What does it say about believers? Equipping the saints for the work of ministry to build up the body of Christ until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of God's Son growing into maturity. So every Christian believer is also maturing, is growing up. It says equipping the saints for the work of the ministry. Every believer is eventually going to be doing the work of the ministry. And they need to be trained, they need to be given that room to grow. If you're uh, going somewhere, where there's absolutely no opportunities to grow, you could get crowded conditions and the Christians won't grow. They need room to stretch and be in ministry. They're not all the same. We know there's many varieties of tomatoes. They're not all the same. And they're not all in the same degree of right, ripeness. And so many Christians may be mature, others may be new baby believers. Just like we have different degrees of ripeness on this plant. This one's ready to eat, this one's not yet. So what does the almanac say? Tomatoes grow in all sizes from tiny currants <coughs> to cherry to large beefsteak. Right, so these are the little cherry tomatoes. And there's a large beefsteak that you can slice, put on your steak. What does the Bible say? A body is made up of many parts, and each of them has its own use. Right, so there are many, many different kinds of Christians. They're, they have different ministries and different jobs in the body of Christ. And at different levels of maturity. <laughs> now preparing the ground. You see this plant is going deep. We talked about that before. But in order to go deep, it needs the right kind of ground. It needs ground that is prepared for it. What does the farmer's almanac say? Till, so till soil to about one foot and mix in fertilizer. Okay, till the soil. That is talking about breaking up hard ground. That is, and, and I'm sure that's not fun for the soil either. That is talking about taking sharp instruments and banging them into the soil and breaking up all that hard ground until the soil is soft enough to have the plant, to receive the plant. What does the Bible say about believers? Plow up the hard ground of your hearts, for now is the time to seek the Lord, that He may come and shower righteousness upon you. Right, so He says, guess where the hard ground might be? Might be your heart. Yes. Might be your heart is hard. 
might be you have said to yourself, oh, I'm not a believer and I'm never going to be a, be a believer. And that's a hard heart. And he says to plow up the hard heart, hard ground of your heart. And that's not going to be easy sometimes. Sometimes that's going to hurt. Because to admit that you have a need, to admit that you have sinned, to admit that maybe you're a sinner before God, to admit that you've turned your back on God, this is breaking up that fallow ground. This is breaking up the hardness yes. of your heart. Amen. And to be on your face before God and seek the Lord and come to a place of repent repentance is necessary before God can plant salvation. Otherwise your heart is hard and you will just keep rejecting it. But God wants to put salvation in your heart and it needs some time to have some breaking done. Yes. Some breaking and some admittance that we are sinners and we do need the grace of God to save us. We'll find that these little plants have a challenge to overcome as well. What does the almanac say about the right kind of soil to put your tomato plant? The soil pH needs to be acidic and not alkaline. All right, acidic. That, that sounds harsh. That sounds like that's kind of hard for a tomato plant. I mean, why am I in this acidic soil? But that's what they do well in. Feel the burn. Yeah. <laughs> Feel the burn. <laughs> and sometimes we might wonder why we have challenges in life. And why it's so hard sometimes. And, and it kind of feels like life's acidic. <laughs> but what does the scripture tell us? For you, God, tested us. You refined us as silver is refined. So it's these very challenges that as we overcome them, we mature and we grow. And so we need not to have just like base, neutral life. We need some challenges yes. to grow. And we need to be fruitful. My plant was fruitful. And then it fell over in the wind here. It spilled all its fruit on the ground. But it is being pretty fruitful. I'm happy with it. With proper care, this vining plant will produce a bumper crop. So if I read my farmer's almanac right and I do all the right things for my little plant, it should produce a bumper crop, which means lots and lots of fruit. And what does the Bible say about Christian believers? You didn't choose me, but I chose you. I have appointed you to go to produce fruit. All right. So he says, I have chosen you to bring forth fruit. She won't hurt she you. She won't bite. She doesn't bite. You can touch her. You can touch her. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Hard, yeah. Hard poodle. Yeah. 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 Yeah, you want a prize? Yeah, reach in, take a prize. Don't look, just look. Not to be a surprise. Okay. My name's Sheba. Sheba? What's funny is everybody thinks he's a food food dog, and these are some of the best hunting dogs we've ever that's, seen. That's what they were bred for, yeah. hunting birds. Yeah. <laughs> I hate humans, you can't beat a good dog. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then. So God has chosen us to be fruitful. Sure. sure. Sheba. Her name is Sheba. She's so friendly. Yes, yeah, she's very soft. She loves soft kids. and fluffy. <laughs> Hey! Leave your tomatoes on the vine as long as possible. And what does Jesus say? 
I am the vine, and you are the branches. Those who remain in me, and I in them, will bear much fruit, for you can do nothing without me. All right. So Jesus said, he is the vine. And that's the central core here. He is the vine, and we are the branches. And he says, without, if we're not connected, it's a branch that's not on the vine anymore. I took this off a little earlier today, and it, was, it looked perfectly good. Now, it looks like it's dying. And if you're not connected to the vine, because you won't bear any fruit. You won't bear any fruit, and also, if you're not connected to the vine, you'll eventually wither away. You may look good for a little while, but you'll eventually wither away. Yes. Jesus says, I am the vine, and you are the branches, so stay close to me. Stay connected to me. Yes. Don't tear yourself away from me. Because what's going to happen to this poor little branch? It's going to die. It's going to die. It needs a vine. And Jesus said, "I don't tear yourself off of me. I am the vine. I am the source of life. And of course, tomatoes, once they are ripe and once we do harvest them, they feed the hungry. Don't they? That'll be this. Spanish explorers returned home from the New World with tomatoes. Wealthy people believed that the fruits were poisonous. Only the peasants were brave and hungry enough to eat them. Brothers, consider your calling. Not many wise are from a, from a human perspective. Not many powerful, not many of noble birth. All right, so when they brought, first brought tomatoes from America back to Spain, the Spanish rich people and the aristocrats refused to eat the tomatoes. They said, we think maybe they're poisonous. And they refused to eat them. But the poor people who were hungry and needed food, they said, I think I'll take a chance. Yes. And they stepped out and had them some tomatoes. And of course, they were fed. And so it is with Jesus. A lot of rich people and, and important people, people in authority, don't want anything to do with Jesus. But broken people and poor people and hurt people, these people say, I am hungry for something. I feel my hunger. See, when you're rich and important, sometimes you don't feel your hunger. That's right. And but when you get broken, when you're having troubles, you feel that hunger. And they say, I think I'll give Jesus a chance. I've tried everything else. I think I'll give Jesus a chance. And what happens? He's good. He's good. He's wonderful. And 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 the rich people are missing out because Jesus is good. But he says, look at the church. It's all broken people. It's all the bottom of the ladder. I'm proud to say I'm one of them. Uh -huh. Because Jesus says, come to me and I will give you rest. Amen. Now also we learned about tomato plants that they can have some problems. One of the problems is called bottom hangers. And I bought this plant because it has these problems. I mean, this is probably one that wasn't going to sell. I said, I want that one. So it has all the problems I wanted it to have. And it's got some bottom hangers. And we'll see what bottom hangers are, and then we'll look at suckers. What does the farmer's almanac say about bottom hangers? Blight is a fungal disease. Remove the leaves from the bottom. Being close to the ground, soil pathogens splash onto them. All right, these bottom hangers, they're too close to the dirt. You actually should remove them, and after this is over, I'll remove them and try to save this plant. But they're too close to the ground. And this is a problem with believers. They say, well, I want to be fruitful. 
but I also kind of like the world. <laughs> and they hang around too close to the ground, don't they? Too close to the bottom. And what happens is the bottom ones are the first to go, but it sort of spreads up the plants. That's why you need to get rid of them. You need to take care of them so it doesn't spread to the rest of the healthy plant. Now what does the Bible say? Don't love the world or anything that belongs to the world. If you love the world, you cannot love the Father. If you love the world, you're a bottom hanger. <laughs> you just love the world. You say, like, I'm on plant, but I love the world too. And that's a bottom hanger, and you're susceptible to disease. Anything can happen, any kind of a disease and unbelief, and you can spread it to others. Oh, no. Practice crop rotation from year to year to prevent diseases that may have overwintered. All right, that's interesting. It says that disease, once it gets into your plant, it can overwinter. That means that you think, well, after winter, we'll wait through the winter, and, and then the, disease, the, the plant will be okay. Yeah. Not okay. It stays over winter. Ah. And in the springtime, that disease will just come right back. So we need a, a full overhaul, don't we? What does the scripture say? Change your hearts and lives. Turn back to God so that your sins may be wiped away. Right. Complete change. Complete overhaul. Crop rotation. That means tearing up all the old crops, tilling the ground again, putting up brand new plants in. If you if sins come into your life, it's time for crop rotation. Lord, Thank you, Jesus. tear me up. <laughs> tear me up. Get down to that altar. Repent. Let the Lord tear you up. Let him till the hard ground again. Let him plant you again with his good seed. Start over with Jesus. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Start over with Jesus. No matter how many times you have to. <laughs> All right, now suckers. Let me go back to this picture of suckers. All right, there's the bottom hangers. Now these are the suckers. In the crook of the branches is this little sucker. <laughs> and I love this plant because it does have a lot of suckers on it. And when I get home, I'm going to remove those suckers. <laughs> get those suckers out! <laughs> okay, what does the farmer's almanac tell us about suckers? Pinch and remove suckers that develop in the joint. They won't bear fruit and will take energy away from the rest of the plant. Alright, so these suckers are doing two things. They're not going to bear any fruit, ever. There's never going to be a tomato on the suckers. And also, they're going to take energy from the rest of the plant. Now the church has some suckers. <laughs> what does this verse say? For we hear that there are some among you who are idle. They are not busy, but busy bodies. All right, those are suckers. They are suckers. Those are suckers. They're just sucking the life out of the church. That's right. They're take, 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 and they don't give. They don't give back. They're not giving to the Lord. They're not giving to others. They're not giving, uh, showing love to church members. And they suck from the past. The pastor gave me this, pastor gave me that. And all they are is busy bodies, and they're not, part they're not participating. And finally, my almanac tells me you never refrigerate tomatoes. I never knew that before this. I always refrigerated my tomatoes. But it says, it says don't do that. Yeah, but here's what it says. Never refrigerate tomatoes because temperatures below 55 degrees cause the precious flavor compounds to break down. Okay, so apparently they taste better if you don't refrigerate them. Who knew? I guess I'll change that too. What does the Bible say? Because disobedience will expand, the love of many will grow cold. All right, so in the last days, disobedience will expand and the love of many will grow cold. That's a refrigerated Christian. 
<laughs> you love this growing cold. So just like we never refrigerate tomatoes, you never refrigerate Christians. Keep your love warm. Keep your heart pure. And keep your love warm toward God. Okay. Now. Okay. We said all that to say this. Is Jesus speaking to you? Some some uh, 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 disciples were walking along the road and Jesus was talking to them and this is what they commented on. They said to each other, did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? And that's, uh, that's something that happens when we hear the word of God, something happens inside our heart. An old preacher named John Wesley said this when he was getting saved. The preacher was describing the change which God works in the heart through faith in Christ. And I felt my heart strangely warm. Jesus makes his presence known by a small voice. And he says this, he says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. <laughs> If any man hear my voice, and we don't hear a necessarily an audible voice, we hear God speaking to our heart, and opens the door, I will come into him. And when we are ready to accept Jesus, sometimes we pray something which is sometimes called a sinner's prayer. And this is a prayer we can pray when we're ready to admit that we're sinners, and everybody's a sinner. We're not all ready to admit it, but we're all sinners. The whole world are sinners, but some of us have accepted it and are ready to admit it and accept Christ's forgiveness. It must be prayed with faith in our hearts. We need to believe that Jesus is able to do what we're asking Him to do. And a readiness to have a life-changing encounter. Two things. We have to have faith and we have to be ready to change. Now, a lot of people have faith, but they're not ready to change. That's a problem. A prayer of faith. Okay, you can pray this prayer. If any of these situations applies to you, if you never have before, never ever prayed before, and that, I wasn't raised in a church, and I, I once said uh, years and years ago, I said, Jesus, if, if you're real, I, was, I wasn't completely sure, but I was giving him a chance to prove himself to me. If you're real, give me a hand. If you had never had before, you have in the past, but you think it might mean more today. A lot of us, uh, perhaps when we were in Sunday school, we were eight or nine years old, we said a sinner's prayer, but now we really understand what sin is because we have slipped away from the Lord. You have been walking the app far off and want to come back. You want to set an example for somebody else. That's what we're doing here today. The Bible uh, tells us we need to preach and set examples for other people. Or, like me, you just like to give your heart to Jesus over and over again. Jesus save me! Jesus save me! Jesus save me! And we declare our faith publicly because Jesus declared his love publicly. Where did he hang on the cross? In some back room? No, on Calvary. He hung on the cross on Calvary. He declared his love for mankind on a hill in front of the entire city of Jerusalem. And we can do the same thing. The Bible says if you stand before others and are willing to say you believe in me, then I will tell my Father in heaven that you belong to me. And so that's the, that's the deal that Jesus makes with each and every one of us. If we're willing to make that public confession, yes, Jesus, you are Lord. Jesus says, I'll tell my Father in heaven that you said so. Three important questions. Number one, do you want to know Jesus as your Savior right now? That's an important question to answer. Number two, do you believe he died to save you from your sins and that he rose from the dead? Because if he just died and didn't rise from the dead, then we don't have any power. But Jesus rose from the dead and proves that we can have a new life as well. Finally, do you believe that he is here right now waiting to save you? Jesus is God. God is everywhere. God is here right now waiting to save you.
This is a prayer that we can pray. You might want to pray it with us right now. It says this. Dear Jesus, I know that I have sinned against you and that my sins separate me from you. I am truly sorry. Right now, I turn away from my sinful past. Please forgive me and help me to keep from sin. I believe you died for my sins. I believe you rose from the dead. You are alive and you hear this prayer from my heart. I invite you, Jesus, to be both my Savior and the Lord of my life. I want you to rule my life from now on. Praise God. If you pray that prayer, and if it's the first time you prayed that prayer, or if you prayed it before, God will come into your life and change it. You need to believe in Him, and you need to be willing to let Him change your life. We have two t-shirts here. We have the Who Am I t-shirt. We have the Child of God t-shirt. Which one do you want? Who am I? Or do I want this one? I got this t-shirt. Child of God t-shirt. Who wants a Child of God t-shirt? I do. Okay. But some people did accept Him. They believed in Him and He gave them the right to become children of God. That's what God does for us. Give me free, 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 free. Salvation. Salvation. <laughs> Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. Yes. And finally, if you openly say, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Amen. Okay, what did we learn today? Anybody, let's say, what did we learn today? What did you learn today? What about tomatoes? We learned about tomatoes. Yeah, we learned a lot about tomatoes. I didn't know them tomatoes. Yeah. That tomatoes are like Christians. Yes. Yeah. Not to be um, low hanging. Don't, let, don't hang low. That's right. Don't hang low. Don't, Get don't. rid of them old, that old world. That's right. Yeah. It suckers. <laughs> Get those suckers out of the church. We don't want those suckers in the church. We don't want those suckers. I hate that sucker. I hate that sucker. What have you been thinking about Jesus lately? Anybody want to say anything about what they've been thinking about the Lord lately? I've been thinking that I love Him. He gives us strength. He gives. He, he, he answers our needs when they're in His will. What do you want to tell others about Jesus? Who wants to say something about Jesus? Make a testimony about Jesus. He has no respect the person. Yes, that's right. Amen. That's right. Yes. Amen. Have a faith. Yes. Amen. And ask for what you want. That's right. Yes. Amen. Amen. Okay. Therese, you want to close in prayer for us? Lord Jesus, thank you for this opportunity to be here today, to meet new friends, and to preach your word in this public setting. We pray, God, that your word goes out from here and that many will hear the gospel because of what is done here today. We like to pray that you bless the speakers and bless those that hear. We pray that you bless our friends as you bring them by. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise God. God bless you, ladies. God bless you, ladies. Thanks for stopping. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, sister. Yes. God Want bless some you. water? Would you like some of all the water? Yes. Yeah, we have some. Yeah, you look warm. Come here, buddy. Thank you. God bless you, ladies.